Sound art itself has a long history, and what I was most excited about was to actually be able to exhibit the work that you were doing in terms of you were hacking you know, the sampler back in the day to push it to get those sounds that you did for Public Enemy. Once you're interacting with the technology in that way and there's an abstraction, you really change the audio landscape of our society. Like when that came on, people just didn't even know what to do. It's been, it's been going really good. It all started with Trashin, which was an uh, art show that I curated, which was the name of my single to cross promote the album back in the day. It all kind of snowballed from there, and I continued to curate and produce art shows. And then I actually exhibit um, my music as sound art in galleries. So there'll be like an abstract version of sound art, maybe it doesn't have lyrics, and then there's an actual music version. So I'm kind of really interested in being able to exhibit, you know, music in a gallery setting where people think about it and they close their eyes and it's not about what you see, it's really about what you hear. When you listen to it, you get a, a picture of what it could be like. I went in grab four tracks off the Fear of a Black Planet album. I went bananas. Chopped samples, snare hits, we changed the sounds, made it do something, added crazy effects, DJ effects and stutters and all kinds of weirdness and I went nuts. So it's pretty cool. It's four, four sound pieces. I think it's pretty different for me. Um, it's a little industrial sounding, a little semi-electronic sounding because I just wanted to push the limits and take that into another world. In the future, this show is up for eight weeks. It might travel to LA and hopefully London as well. Let's say Swiss Beats walks in, right? Yeah. And he buys a sound piece at a gallery and samples it in a song. That's, I want, I want these people actually buying material for their art through a gallery. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs>